I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any agenda changes? There are no changes. Thank you. Any public comments? No, no public comments. Okay. Communications. Uh, okay, we're right along. Board and staff reports. We're going to start with the diversity, equity, and inclusion committee report. So we have a hard copy of that in our packet as well as in our board material as well. And for those of you that are watching virtually, we'll have a copy of this posted to our website along with a glossary uh, for the presentation. So districts have a critical role in taking diversity, equity, and inclusion to the next level. Not just talking about it, but making it part of the culture. And not just talk about having it be part of the culture, but having it be the culture. As I start my 35th year as superintendent, or as actually feels like 35 years, <laughs> as I start my 35th year in the district and my fifth year as superintendent, I reflect back on my time here and what's next. And so immediately I captured this picture that you can see in front of us on the screen. And this roadmap captured not only my journey, but all of yours. At times it's straightforward. Sometimes it's a U-turn, giving us a chance to reset, refocus, and possibly change directions. Sometimes the road splits and we take the road less traveled, or sometimes we forge ahead. This roadmap is also symbolic of the journey of our diversity, equity, and inclusion work. And as we share the work from the diversity, equity, and inclusion work group this evening, notice the word belonging is in the title. Starting my, starting my 35th year in a place that I love and that I call home, that sense of belonging that I have is what I want for all students, staff, and community. I'm so proud of the work that the district is doing, and it fits in perfectly with our mission statement. You take a look at the mission statement. We have committed to creating a caring culture that fosters lifelong learners and responsible citizens. Our mission will create an ecosystem of success that is built on the foundation of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. It will provide access, opportunity, innovation, confidence, trust, respect, caring, and relationship building. All students, families, staff, community must feel welcome. All students, family, staff, community must feel they belong. And all students, family, staff, community must feel that they are supported in school. In order for us to truly make a difference, everyone needs to make the commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. It is an honor and a privilege to introduce Gwen Weber McLeod, President and CEO of Gwen Incorporated, and her team, Kathy Adams and Judy Dixon, who have been supporting our district with DEI implementation for the past two years. Gwen and her team have worked with us to take a critical look at our work through the lens of equity, giving every student the best possible experience to prepare them for academic success and prepare them for an ever-changing world. Great, thank you, Patty. It occurs to me that you have some new members on your board since I was here. So as a precursor to my remarks tonight, I wanna to let you know that I'm a 1974 graduate of Carthage Central High School. My parents and I moved to this area in 1968 following my father's tour of duty in Vietnam. It was Camp Drum then, and he was the director of logistics. And his primary responsibility was to begin the transition of Camp Drum to Fort Drum. Both of my parents made political runs and were former county legislators. They are Charles and Barbara Weber. My mom is a teacher, retired teacher from Great Bend Elementary. And I'm also a SUNY Potsdam graduate. So I claim with pride that I'm a North Country girl. Mm -hmm. Although people are like, where do you live? I'm like, you know where Syracuse is in Canada. I live in between there. <laughs> and my mom actually continues to live in Black River as we speak. So I wanted to let those of you who hadn't met me before know that. So it wasn't um, hard for me 
to decide to come and support your district in this important effort, because this is where I grew up. I was a student in a school district here, and many of my colleagues and friends were graduates of Watertown High. So when Patty called me, we were talking, I said, yeah, I got you. I think I have something that I can help you with. And I'm so excited to be here this evening to share with you the results of this work that this amazing team of education leaders and community leaders are going to simply make some recommendations and suggestions to you tonight. So I've already done that introduction introduction of myself and this is my team Kathy Adams she is the senior consultant for organization development and Judy Dixon Dixon is the chief operating officer in my business winning is a private sector leadership development corporation I live in Auburn New York most of our clients are in New York State and we work nationally and one of the things we specialize in is helping organizations of, across industries who are really wanting to think about diversity equity and inclusion as a strategic resource and that's the way we'll be talking to you about it tonight. So it was about one year ago that my company was engaged by your district to assist you all in thinking about this idea of focusing on the concepts of diversity, equity, and inclusion as a strategic education resource, a resource that you can use to ensure your student population the population you serve that you already know, and we know because we were talking to Kat Patty about your demographics, already includes students of many diverse backgrounds and experiences. And the goal when a board of edu education and a school district decide to focus in this area is to ensure that your district is making sure that there is consistent, fair, and equitable access and opportunity for every single student to achieve academic success. So to do this work on your behalf, we embarked on a journey in partnership with your district leadership and the DEI strategy committee, of which most of them are here. Some of our community members are not here with us this evening. And our task was to identify specific strategies that could be added to your existing plan and aligned with your current strategic plan to achieve this outcome. And this evening, you will hear the results of this work. Whenever my company is approached by school districts to help them think about focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion as an education resource to ensure student success, the school board's eyes kind of looking at me like, what's this got to do with me? <laughs> they often want a compelling reason. Why should we invest in this work and in these projects? So, and I fully understand that concern. Because I sort of the strategic leaders of the organization, you are also representatives of very diverse communities, and you not only need to understand why your district wouldn't be involved in this, but you're also going to want to be communicating about why this is an education imperative, an education imperative to engage in what we call DEI work. So I'm going to share with you the most common reasons our education clients share with us. First of all, Boards, school boards will say to us after we talk to them for a while, well, it seems like it's the right thing to do. And I would offer for your consideration that given your student population, your school district desires like every single school district we work in, work in to ensure that every single student succeeds regardless of their backgrounds and experiences. It's about the bottom line. And school districts often receive and or seek funding for students based on your student demographics and needs. And these funds frequently support critical programs and services that ensure every single student, regardless of their background or experience, gets what they need to be academically successful. Another compelling reason, once we talk with our clients, because we're always asking them, like, why do you really want to do this, right? We want to know, is that they come from this idea that none of us is smarter than all of us. And this is a philosophy that really inspires and compels school districts to engage students, parents, faculty, staff, and the community at large in working together with you to ensure that every single student succeeds. But I want to add one more compelling reason for your consideration. Trend data is indicating that in the next five to 10 years, up to 85% of new entrants into the workforce will be female, millennials, and the generations following them, and people of color. This emerging workforce, who are the future leaders of this community, are already in every single building. 
and every single program, every single class that this district has. And I'm inviting you as a school board to keep that piece of data in front and center as you prepare through your academic efforts, the next generation of leaders for our community, state and country. The strategies you'll hear this evening over time will help the Watertown City School District continually prepare these new generations of successful students. And with the goal of helping them continually succeed in the world, students we hope will be so proud to say that my success story began in the Watertown City School District. My Carthage friends might think I'm fraternizing with the enemy tonight. <laughs> I was a cheerleader. I remember those football games. <laughs> I'll tell them we made peace. <laughs> right? So it's my pleasure. And I hope that one thing I said to you this evening inspires you to think about this as education leaders who are working in partnership with your superintendent to really educate, make sure there's equitable, fair access for every student, regardless of their background to ensure that you can really push out of this district, this new generation of leaders that will be so proud to say that my success story began in the Watertown City School District. It's with great pleasure that I introduce to you Tyler Detomi, someone our team experiences as a gifted, devoted educator and a future education leader. Tyler is a member of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Strategy Committee, and he is here to introduce the committee and share some brief remarks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is only the only thing that ever, ever has. <coughs> Reflecting on our work as a diversity, equity, inclusion committee, we worked with a wide group of stakeholders uh, from individuals who are part of the district, such as administration, staff, um, faculty, uh, teaching assistants, aides. We worked with community members, such as local pastors, and um, we also worked with Gwenko and her team. It's, it's been a really great process and we worked very collaboratively to come up with ideas and strategies to share with you. And it has been so great getting to know all of these individuals who are so invested in this and so committed. So thank you. Thank you, Tyler. And thank you to all the committee members that are here this evening. Your work has been amazing. So a round of applause for the committee. Started. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Stacy Eager Converse, our Assistant Superintendent for Instruction. And Stacy is also our Chief Diversity Officer. Stacy, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> Throughout our time as leaders of this district, we have focused on ethical leadership, having good intentions, and remaining focused on what is good for kids. The same applies to all of our work around diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. We are focused on educating each and every person in our school community. Our goal is education, not indoctrination. In trying to frame this in a clear manner for both our staff and our students and their families, our goal for this approach is very similarly aligned to the work of Urshad Manji of Moral Courage Ed, diversity without division. We must hear additional perspectives and we should not fear them. We must be empathetic to the experiences of every child coming into our district. And we must be willing to think about those perspectives and how they shape learning and social experiences for our students, while at the same time rejecting the notion of any labeling or shaming. By emphasizing these components, we believe that we will find diversity without division and that we will create safe and meaningful learning experiences for our students. This committee has helped us create guideposts for our work, but the process of this committee's work is recursive and it won't end just with this committee. Our initial prompt was to pull people in, inviting voices to the table to explore with us the work that needs to be done and make plans. Through the use of data, both qualitative and quantitative, we have and will continue to reflect and then we will continue this process focusing on the breadth of voices 
the depth of their insights, and continuing to explore, make plans, and reflect. You might notice as we go through tonight that some of the slides place an emphasis on all students. The work that we will share has been aligned to our district's strategic plan, which was developed um, in 2018-2019. All students is used in that framework to denote that each and every student has a right to these elements in their education. We have learned a lot about the meaning of the word all in the last few years. Our district's belief in this work is that all means to be inclusive and representative to ensure that every child feels they belong at Watertown City School District, regardless of educational setting, structure, or any other force or characteristic. Our first strategic plan goal uh, revolves around collaboration. This is always a focus area of our district because it means that we are putting voices together. The committee's work related to this goal developed the two suggestions listed up on the slide and some of the considerations underneath those suggestions brought forward on how to address these aspects were to develop a value statement explicitly expressing the district's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, including updating the district's website to include a section or link to a statement that all people are welcome, included, and safe through all, all, all areas of school community life. To amend the district's strategic plan uh, to include a goal focused entirely on diversity, equity, and inclusion, although we believe that this is the underpinning of every single thing that we do as educators. To adopt a resolution confirming the board's opposition to racism and bigotry in all of its forms. Additionally, they suggest to seek out and recognize the contributions from across the school community, including students, faculty, staff from all levels, families, and our external community partners to strengthen the relationship with Fort Drum and to invite the adults in our children's lives, such as teachers, teacher assistants, caregivers, and counselors to participate in educational programs focused on anti-racism and anti-bigotry. We set our committee off to work somewhat blindly, and we did this intentionally. We did not want any in-progress work already happening in the district to obscure ideas or insights that the committee's voices might bring forth. But you can see that there are things happening around the notion of collaboration in our district that are related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We are in particular very excited about what the My Brother's Keeper project will do for our students of color in the future and the partnerships that the work will develop and expand upon. While we have only just been notified of that award, more information will come on that program as we receive additional guidance from State Ed on getting started. Of critical importance, especially in light of the pandemic experiences our community, both locally and worldwide, have had, our recommendations to support physical and mental well being. Specifically within professional learning on those topics, our suggestions to teach the five competencies of social emotional learning skills to both students and our staff, with special attention to reducing the effects of trauma that stem from a variety of life experiences, including racism, bigotry, poverty, and other forms of abuse and oppression to teach adults how to be effective advocates for children, to educate faculty and staff on how to create culturally responsive learning environments. And a focus here is especially on being culturally responsive and helping staff to understand what that looks like, how to create it in the big picture, and how to create meaningful daily experiences for students that are culturally responsive. We have some examples of a lot of the work that we are doing with regard to professional learning already, but we know that we have only scratched the surface of what it means to be culturally competent and responsive. You can see that there are several book studies and presentations and trainings that have been uh, booked and or provided and more work will be done as we go forward into 2021, 2022, and beyond. Goal three within our strategic plan might seem as though it doesn't hit on diversity, equity, and inclusion directly. But in actuality, part of being culturally responsive is what goes into the surrounding environment. 
all of our children need to see people who look like them, but also who look differently from them. This is their reality in the world. We have an academic responsibility to be representative and inclusive in all of our work. And that includes what the structure of our buildings look like. One recommendation from the committee's work is to focus on this with regard to signage and to ensure that all groups are represented, particularly those groups who are traditionally underrepresented and underserved. The We Are Watertown initiative, a signage initiative, started with our PBIS district-wide team, and it focuses on inclusiveness and belonging for our students and staff something that we believe can be built upon to support the work on diversity, equity, and inclusion with regard to the physical appearances of our buildings. This is one of those times where the strategic planning team really felt strongly about emphasizing all when this goal was developed. While our journey has reframed the meaning of this for us, as we mentioned, it continues to signify each and every child and inclusiveness and belonging for every child. Suggestions that resulted from the committee's work here were to emphasize data when examining possible learning opportunities, specifically to allow the data to show the district how to meet the unique needs of students and staff with attention to populations from historically underrepresented and underserved backgrounds, to disaggregate the data to determine where disparities occur among groups to seek regular feedback from across the school community through district, building, and grade level based surveys, formal and informal conversations, and other means of collecting information to inform our short and long range decision making. We have started a more transparent sharing of data within our district um, with all of our staff. And you can see that um, on some of uh, the bullet points on this slide. And we have some work in progress that we are doing to expand some of the learning opportunities available to our students so that they have access to both uh, representative elements um, as well as things that may be exposure to differences um, from the community. Goal five revolves around curriculum and instruction. And the committee's recommendations for this were to really focus on reviewing and updating both through the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and focusing on culturally responsive practices. Specific suggestions were to teach the five competencies of social emotional learning skills to students and staff. And you can see that also relates back to strategic goal number two. Seek out and invite guest speakers from underrepresented and underserved populations. Teach the unique histories and contributions of historically underrepresented and oppressed groups to connect, collaborate, and share curriculum, instructional strategies, and resources across our community, including districts, towns, and counties, and to invite members from across the school community to discuss curriculum and instructional practices and resources. Some may wonder, looking at this goal, if our district is headed in the direction of teaching critical race theory. First, it is important to understand that the technical definition of critical race theory and the societal perception of what it is differ greatly. Critical race theory by its technical definition is a concept originating to explain race and racism in a structure of laws and tenets of law to second and third year law students, thereby rendering it an abstract concept not easily understood by K-12 students. Secondly, we must return to our initial statement that our focus is on diversity without division. And to achieve this, we strongly believe that we must focus on hearing multiple perspectives and voices. To do so means to analyze our current curriculum and instruction through the lens of equity. What voices are represented? What voices are not represented? And how can we include them in our academic program to better serve students and build skills of critical thinking, collaboration, and more? These are the questions we should focus on well ahead of introducing any particular theory that might remain abstract to the bulk of our student population. And we are in progress in some areas of our curriculum and instructional work. We have moved in the direction of vendor provided culturally responsive curricula for our ELA programming K-8. Students are reading books like The Hate You Give, Blood on the River, 
thunder rolling in the mountains. And specifically for our K-4 ELA program, American Reading Company, and from their website itself, American Reading Company has located more than 4,000 kid-tested African-American titles and an, addi an additional 5,500 multicultural titles, which form the centerpiece of the reading experience in our partner schools. In addition, because there were so few multicultural titles available for very beginning readers, American Reading Company created its own publishing company and has produced more than 500 ARC Press titles for beginning readers. The committee's hard work and dedication to establishing guideposts for our work has led us to think even more critically about what we are undertaking in the future and the impact it will have on our climate and culture within our district and buildings, the environment in which our students are learning and the continued work we have to move forward. These are just a few more experiences planned for 21-22, though we readily acknowledge that there is still so much more to be done. That said, we cannot emphasize enough our belief in diversity without division and the inclusion of multiple voices and perspectives in our students' worlds. Our work must constantly reflect these intents and purposes, both implicitly and explicitly. The DEI committee will be shifting into a work group to continue to guide our work as we press on, revisiting that recursive process we mentioned earlier continuously pulling additional voices in to be representative of our community, our student population, and their needs. I now turn it over to our Assistant Superintendent for Personnel and Student Services, Tina Lane. Our committee itself has embarked on the extraordinary journey, buckling up, taking pit stops, U-turns, on-ramps, and off-ramps along the way. The path that we have embarked upon several months ago is an ongoing and ever evolving journey. There are many programs involved in this work and it is ever changing. These are the guiding principles that will help us to stay on course as we continue on the path and work through challenges that allow our work to continue. And these are commitment to the process, understanding diversity, equity and inclusion, and that data analysis that Ms. Eager Converse talked about earlier. And it's now my pleasure to introduce one of our DEI committee members, Carla Claymore. So after hearing our presentation, we invite you to consider how your role as a board member and a member of this community, how you will support the district's DEI efforts. So that was a lot, right? <laughs> There's a lot to consider, right, when you're preparing a student population for the future. So the committee was really kind of curious and posed that question or that concept to you for a reason. But before we maybe get started, I was wondering, I always ask people this, what was going on in your head, your heart, or your gut as education leaders co-responsible for making sure this population of students has equitable, fair, and quality access to, up to um, good education here at the district. And when we are talking about using this idea as a strategic education resource, I was wondering what you might have been thinking. We're all smart enough to read that, right? Feeling what was going on in your head, your heart, or your gut as a leader thinking about that. And then the committee was curious as to if any ideas bubbled up for you in terms of how you as board members might see yourselves not only as elected officials, but as members of this community that's increasingly diverse as well, supporting your students through the academic experience in your district. Every answer is correct, by the way. <laughs> you have magna cum laude on the facilitator. Thoughts? Um, I guess I wanna start by thanking the committee. So thank you everybody for coming, we appreciate it. Um, on behalf of the board and um, knowing that you have our support and all the work that you're doing. So we appreciate that. Um, I think speaking for us, we just engaged in our first, um, we're doing blind spot mm -hmm. as a group, which yeah. I think is a nice start for us to really start delving into this idea of biases. And I think that's a great place to start um, and bringing that with us. Um, I know as an educator myself, looking at some things um, to help me in the classroom with, with children in different districts, which I think is a great way to Kind of look at things. Um, 
I also think that as members of the Board of Ed, we're going to be sitting on various district committees. So if there isn't already DEI committee members on those other committees, we can certainly bring that lens if it's applicable. So I think that's a great place to bring that in. Um, and anyone else can jump in? That's what I got. I think for me, one of the major components for this body is that uh, this product that's been worked so hard on, if we don't have an understanding and a buy into this, clear, very clear buy into this, it's much harder to convey it to the stakeholders, all of our stakeholders in our community. And I think as a board, part of our responsibility, whatever we do, is to be united once a decision is made, to be united to the community, to explain to them why when you are approached and you're asked a question, um, often it's friend to friend. And that often is a much better delivered message than just hearing it by directive. I think the, there was another term used, uh, but by mandate or by um, edict, that, that's what we're going to do. So I think part of our responsibility as educational leaders is to be that eyes and ears and translator to the community. Um, I'd also say that, you know, I really, really like what Patty said at the outset, because while this is very focused on a sp specific way we um, deal with the human beings that are our district, looking at human beings holistically and how we care for them, how we treat them, um, the culture we have in our buildings. Um, you know, I heard Patty several times say welcoming, caring, supporting, belonging, uh, we'll all be better off with that. This forces us to be a little more um, deliberate in our thought that way, and, and I'm grateful for that. You know, there's information that indicates that the more students at every grade level feel like they belong, they are better positioned to perform academically. And that's why I'm really talking to you in a very specific way as education leaders. First of all, that's what I'm calling you. You're looking at me like, am I really? <laughs> you all are, right? So I would like you to think about it. But to see yourselves as education leaders who have this incredible opportunity to continually work on a culture environment and an academic approach that enables every single one of your students to feel like they belong as a part of the Watertown District with the understanding that the more they feel like they'll be here, we were talking about absenteeism, right? That's an issue for us to take into consideration. Why don't kids want to come to school? And so I think this will create an opportunity for all of you. And I really, could you say your name for me? Randy. Randy, Randy, I think you're really onto something because as a body, this also not only includes opportunities for you to educate, but to engage in what I call respectful heated debate <laughs> about your own points of view. We are presenting this to you with an assumption that you all understand this, believe in it, any of that. What we, what I, where I do believe you are on common ground is that you do have shared agreement as a team of education leaders that you really want the best for every single student. And if you can stay strategically focused on that at those points of respectful, heated debate, I promise you, you will find common ground and figure out how to move forward. And I love that the district's using the, the, those sort of operating principles that are really focused on doing things that don't cause division, that you're looking at how do we call everybody into this and how do we make sure every single student. And a couple of things just um, philosophically I would like to invite you to think about. Your district's already been doing a lot of stuff that I would call diversity, equity, and inclusion work. You haven't just been calling that. So it's not like this is kind of new to you at the operational level. The other thing that is that whether you decided to do anything at all, you already have diversity here because all that is is just the differences that these little people, some not so little, right, bring into these buildings every day where the board can really support the DEI committee, Patty, your team, your faculty and staff, is really thinking about that idea of inclusion, which is the work you do to make sure that your students, staff and faculty, parents, and the community experience the district as a place where they are valued, respected, and can belong. And the equity work, what are those things, what are those mountains, right? We need to move out of these kids' way to ensure that we really generate 
this next generation of new leaders who will deploy themselves. I bought them to Watertonians everywhere I go <laughs> across the country and be proud to say that they started their education experience. Those will be points of really great conversation for you and what I call respectful heated debate. And we invite you to engage in all of that. This committee has done an excellent job. I felt like a proud mama when we practice. They've done an excellent job at presenting some ideas for your consideration, right? That's their job to make some recommendations to you. Now we simply invite you as a board to work with Patty, the committee as they continue to work, to identify where you wanna begin this work and how you wanna go about it. And I can't express enough the importance of what Randy's saying, is to find a way to speak about this in one voice. What is that thing you all have in common as it relates to every single student? And I'm of the suspicion that one of it is, is that in your hearts, you really do want every single student to be successful. And if that's the common ground, I think you have a great springboard to begin your own journey with this. So, DEI committee, did you hear some stuff you wanted to hear? Are you picking up what they're putting down? <laughs> great, Patty, are we good? I think so. Any other comments? Any other comments from the committee? <clears throat> oh, hard work, a lot of hours. And really what's truly commendable, the hours that were spent were a lot through Zoom. And so that's really sometimes quite challenging to have conversations um, through Zoom and, and really to, to get together in a small group and hash out all of these ideas. So we really appreciate all of the feedback that you've given us throughout this journey. And as we uh, lean into it, there's a lot more work to come. So thank you. We really appreciate it. And thank all of you. I really want to commend you on having the courage and will to think about this very, very important education issue and to come up with your own strategies, your own way of making sure that all of your students have an opportunity to be successful. Final thing I might say is you're not in this alone. My company actually did a presentation for the Jefferson County BOCES. So there are other superintendents and school boards all around you that are churning on this idea in the same way that you are. So my company tagline is because leadership is not a job to do alone. Don't do this alone, right? Call in the troops. I said, Patty, you'll be about ready to do a TED talk in a little while on this subject. But I really encourage you to do that. Talk to your colleagues, invite Patty to talk to your colleagues because everyone is grappling with this for the same reason. We want every student to be successful and go out into the world carrying their respective school districts on their back, being proud that they graduated from here and making you all proud. Great, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly, everyone is welcome to stay, but if you all leave, that's okay too. We won't take offense to that. That's <laughs> <Best exodus. laughs> Thank you. Take care. Great job, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Great. So you'll notice we've kind of um, flipped things around. We're going to do um, included with our board and staff reports, our superintendent reports and our assistant superintendent reports and our business manager report up in front. And then hopefully that'll sort of set it, kind of set the stage for the rest of the things that we need to take action on in the agenda. So little switcheroo. So we're going to um, get off of Patty and our superintendent of schools report. Sure. And just to add to that, we recently switched to something called board docs which we will officially do with all board members in September. But in doing the training uh, that we've gone through, Michelle and I, a lot of school boards, uh, when they meet, this is usually the order of agenda, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, and with three new board members, the timing was perfect for us to switch this around so that as we give our report, sometimes later, there are things that we'll be talking about that you'll have to vote on. And you may have more questions that we can elaborate on, but at this time, um, let's give this a whirl. So again, kudos and thanks to the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion uh, Planning Committee. They did a tremendous job, and, and I'm looking forward to the continued work in that area. We still have no guidance yet from the New York State Ed Department or the New York State Department of Health um, on this fall in respects to, you know, what it's going to look like when the students return. And, you know, hopefully that guidance will come out any day. The goal is to have all students return that's the goal. The guidance just needs to permit that. We still have to work through, once we receive that guidance, really taking a look at classrooms, transportation, cafeteria time, 
Um, and Tina and I will be working with our medical providers through Samaritan that uh, we have next week. And we're hoping that we have the guidance. Initially, we were scheduled to talk with them tomorrow, but we've held off, we postponed it for a week because we'd really like the guidance in place. Because, you know, I, if you saw the TV7 News, it was, you know, what's the plan? And the plan is to bring students back. That's kind of plan A. But one thing that we learned is that before the pandemic, we could pretty much come up with a plan A and a plan B and we were good. But during the pandemic, we realized that sometimes you have a plan A and then you have to switch to plan B. And I said, it's a good thing there's 26 letters in the alphabet because we may end up with multiple plans. And it really is just dependent on what that guidance looks like. So more to follow on that. I have a draft copy of my goals for 2021-22 um, in front of you. And so if you take a look, they are fit perfectly with the conversation that we just had. Um, the first standard I picked uh, 1.4, which for those of you that weren't here, that was also one of my goals in 2018-19. But I circled back to that because one of the things that I feel we need to do is really use data to inform all of the decisions that we're making. So coming up um, soon at a board meeting, Stacey, Tina, and I will be laying out some of the current data that we have uh, with the district. Specifically, we will be setting a goal for chronic absenteeism because we know that's an area of concern for us. And we know that if we can get kids in school, um, we can do a lot more with them when they're here. And then we would be providing monthly progress reports uh, with the board as we go along. Again, sharing data uh, with all the appropriate stakeholders and within all of the venues that are listed there and probably there, are, there would be several more. Under standard two operations, resource and personnel management, really just continuing to taking a look at facilitating those quarterly meetings with the district wide safety committee. Uh, one of the things that we talked about and you're going to be approving later tonight is the district comprehensive improvement plan. And one of the uh, things that came out of that group um, was that we really need to do some work with the digi digital citizenship and internet safety and coming up with strategy. So I kind of weave that into one of the goals because it's something that uh, that committee felt very strongly about and it's a district goal that will be part of that plan. So it made sense to put it here. And finally, under standard two, I think it's time that we come up with a five-year facilities plan and we'll work with those of you that are on the finance audit and facilities committee. We'll have our director of facilities, our business manager and the assistant superintendents have been put into that as well. And then we'll be sharing that back with the full board. Under standard three, I would love for you to maybe brainstorm over the course of the next two weeks before our next board meeting, really an outline, just coming up with some topics that you would like the board to dive into that will help really shape the district's vision, mission, and goals. And if we can come up with some topics, we can have little mini sessions at the second meeting of the month. And Stacy, Tina, and I can lead that work, but we'd like your ideas on topics. So if you would consider coming up with some topics um, that you would like to pursue as a board, we can brainstorm at our next meeting. And then when we get together back in September, we can provide a schedule of the topics that will be forthcoming for each month. Standard four is communication and community relations. Again, that was one that I had uh, also had in 2018-19, but I think we went from us uh, having some communication in the district and then with Parent Square and Facebook and our website, we went to having sometimes too much information that was shared. And I don't mean too much that we share too much information sometimes there would be five posts that would come out at, at any given night and that's overwhelming for families and if you look at families that have students in multiple buildings so we really need to streamline the district communication the building communication and then kind of keep going down and into the classroom communication and coming up with a really good system so that everyone is getting information um, that's important to them but that it's not overwhelming at the same time in that, it's also important, I think, that we come up with a district brand. The uh, PBIS team came up with We Are Watertown, and I thought that was maybe a direction that we can consider or what will be our brand. And then again, looking at not only the Parent Square and Facebook, because not, every, not all of our community members have access to that. And although the district sends out a newsletter once a year right before the budget vote, it would be nice to provide quarterly district newsletters 
as well as monthly monthly media blasts of upcoming events that really show the positive images of our district and being more proactive instead of reactive. And then the ethical leadership is really on point with uh, what we're doing as far as our, our sensitivity to the diversity of the school community and respecting uh, divergent opinions. So this is in draft form. I'd just like you to take some time over the course of the next two weeks. And if you have any feedback before the draft goes into the actual working copy, um, any feedback that you have, I'm open to as well. And then the last two things that I have, um, I received a letter from our, one of our attorneys for our Forenza, and they are asking us um, if we would like to participate in the Jewel Labs lawsuit. It's not at any cost to the district, um, but it is something that some of the districts are taking on to really, you know, we probably didn't see as many issues with jeweling throughout the pandemic, but also all of our discipline at the same time decreased. So as we return students back to school and we're working with their social emotional needs and meeting them, I don't know what that will look like as far as behavior and then including things like, you know, jeweling, things like that. We do have board policy that prohibits that, but I need to know if this is something the board would like to pursue. Thoughts? We've done this kind of thing before. Dovetailed on a litigation or? Not in my five year, not in my starting my fifth year. We've never really had the opportunity to do that or been asked to do that. It's at no cost to us, but we could benefit by some sort of settlement in theory. The settlement would benefit us and if we were if we were to be part of that and there was a settlement, it would provide us with opportunities to provide um, really instruction to our students, which we are in some cases already doing that, but we might be able to increase what we're doing currently. Patty, do we know if, um, has BOCES taken a position on that? I, didn't, I do not know that. I just wonder what I'd our, certainly be happy to reach out to see Todd. And I, I have a superintendent meeting on Thursday morning. I can see what the other schools are doing, if anything. I'd be curious to know if other schools are approached in the county. Okay. I'd have to find out who works with them because it's probably just the school yeah. that work with them. Yep. I'll do that and I'll have it ready for you for the next board meeting. Do and we have a, sorry, a drop dead date and we may have to buy in on that? Okay. Don't I don't recall seeing one either. I, I don't know if that's worth asking for our friends. September. Okay. So we have time. Good. And then the last thing was um, New York State School Board Associations. I think uh, Maria, you had already talked about different committees. They're looking for someone to serve on the um, FC liaison program. And basically um, when I spoke, I had a call from a uh, representative from New York State School Board Association a few weeks ago, and they were looking for a representative from our board. They don't currently have one and they couldn't find one in the records where Watertown ever had a representative. So basically the way it was explained to me is like through the New York State School Board Associations, this is like an insider's club where you get to attend meetings um, virtually and they basically probably go over a lot of the things that you see in the reports that NISBO put, uh, puts out. So I didn't know if you had somebody that was- I doing. do. I'll get to that at the end okay. of the meeting. That's Perfect. it for me. All right. Um, Assistant Superintendent for instruction. So as Patty mentioned, um, both our district comprehensive improvement plan and our school comprehensive education plan for CASE, they have been submitted to the state. Um, the CEF was approved. The DSIP is not technically approved by state ed, but they will provide us with feedback in a few weeks. Um, and so we can share that with you at that time. Um, our district-wide PBIS team um, met with Tracy Larguette from BOCES uh, to sort of just reframe our focus for the fall and really think about COVID and how that's going to impact what our PBIS structures look like in each of our buildings. Um, and just to re-energize our teams, um, which have taken a hit in membership, uh, but also participation because of COVID and, and just life, life happenings. Um, our, 
as you know, our K-4 will switch to trimesters this year. Uh, so we've had to make some adjustments to the report cards. Um, and along the way, um, our kindergarten team also worked to better align uh, the report card standards listed uh, for kindergarten to be more mindful of our curricular focuses as well. Uh, so there are some, sh some shifts coming um, in that uh, area. Um, Patty and I met with Ann Garno from North Country Prenatal Perinatal Council um, to discuss our continued partnership with, with them. Um, we've got some very eye-opening statistics on um, pregnancies in, in the state, as well as how our county ranks um, with that. So that will be a continued focus um, of our partnership as we move forward. Uh, the Professional Learning Committee met to sculpt uh, what our early release days will look like this year, um, considering some of our focus areas, but really uh, an initiatives in our district with the focus being on having um, our staff present to staff. So really trying to build um, confidence and competence among our staff to feel like leaders, um, to be sharing their knowledge and expertise that they've developed in a particular area um, with their colleagues. So that will be a focus for this year. We have had a committee meet. Um, Aaron's law, as you know, goes into effect. Um, and while we've had a child abuse prevention curriculum in our elementary buildings for many years, it, it's outdated um, and needed sort of a rejuvenation. So we took the impetus with Aaron's law to just kind of beef everything up. Um, we've selected safer, smarter kids um, and for sixth grade, because that's really part of the middle school structure and the way a lot of those curricula are um, provided, they'll be using safer, smarter teens. Um, but the really great um, piece of this product is that it embeds all of the components of Aaron's Law plus uh, child abuse prevention, sexual abuse prevention um, into one program. Um, and it also provides a specific focus on trafficking, um, which we know has been of some concern in the North Country. So that will be addressed as well through that. So more information to come as we enroll that to our uh, K-6 uh, buildings. Conducted interviews uh, with Pivot uh, for our social emotional mindfulness uh, facilitators in our K-6 buildings, um, as well as our substance abuse prevention counselor position available to share between high school and case. Um, so more news on those to come as um, acceptances come in. Summer school and STEM camp um, going really well. Um, qualitatively, we've heard really positive feedback. Uh, the students absolutely loved uh, the planetarium that was blown up in here the other day, um, but they also really loved the experiences in flying drones over in another atrium um, and just the hands-on component of both programs this year. Um, and lastly, um, a few years ago, for those of you who are new to the board, we participated um, with a uh, professor out of Hunter College. Um, she was at Mercy, um, but she did a school readiness study with our uh, pre-K and kindergarten programming. Um, so as part of uh, a project that I'm doing through Leading with Racial Equity, I'm going to be revisiting uh, that school readiness study and looking for data specific to how we have structured school readiness um, with cultural awareness and, and cultural responsiveness. Um, so I'll share more with you as I dig into that capstone project, um, but thought it might be um, a good foundation for some of our work in diversity, equity, and inclusion as well. That's it. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent for Personnel and Student Services. So we've been very busy in the personnel office. Uh, we did, did a few cursory calculations here. We've We've hired 32 staff members over the last couple of months. Um, we have vacancies left, uh, but we've done upwards of 50 interviews via Zoom. Thank goodness for Zoom. It's been great. We actually uh, you know, have been able to cast our net a little wider, a lot wider actually. Um, but we have openings left in uh, uh, ELA. Uh, we have eight openings, food service, uh, RNs, uh, TA. So we're doing interviews for that, for those positions. Coming up here in the next, uh, within a week, week and a half, uh, so, in, in much appreciated uh, the, the work of the interview committees. People have taken time uh, to work with us, teachers, uh, administrators, very thoughtful processes, very patient, very determined. We, we, we're really excited about the new staff members that we have for our students uh, for this upcoming fall. Um, as many of you may have been alerted at 4 p.m., uh, we had a COVID case today uh, at our STEM program. Uh, and it, so, we, I, I, I give kudos to the staff there, Lisa Blank and her staff. Uh, went over and 
did the, the contact tracing. It's a little bit different now. We're working through a state uh, coordinator now. Uh, so I talked to her twice today. Um, got some guidance from her, sent the information, uh, talked to many parents today. Uh, so, you know, I think, um, you know, as Patty said, and as she mentioned in last night's interview, we're so uncertain, but the thing we are certain about is our safety protocols, uh, the, the process that we do undertake and that open line of communication that we continue to have with our parents and our students and our staff. So we're hopeful. Uh, hopefully we get some guidance soon. Uh, Dr. Rudd uh, and his uh, who is Samaritan certainly have been a great help, our, our medical directors. And we will meet with them next week, as Patty said. Uh, next Wednesday, actually, we're going to meet. And uh, we're hopeful that uh, you know, we'll continue on and we'll be able to get all of our students back. It's just a matter of knowing what the parameters are, that as simple as that. Dovetailing on what Stacy said about the STEM camp, I, I was over there today quite a bit. I can't, I've never, the, the students are skipping to get in. They're skipping, hopping. They're so excited uh, to be a part of that camp. I, I can't say enough about it. So it was really, really neat to see the enthusiasm from the, from the students, from, from the parents as well. Um, also uh, looking at, uh, we, we have a couple of openings um, for, for world languages and, and we're working to try to think outside of the box. I know Jess and Mark at Case I'll have come up with a plan for parents uh, with, with trying to help our students um, to get their credits in, in French. So we're working diligently to try to fill those positions. And so Stacy and I have been working together and um, we're, we're trying to figure out some plans going forward in the future. So we'll keep the board appraised of, of what we uh, what we work on and what we come up with there. So thank you. Thank you. School business manager. <coughs> so hours is getting close to the end hopefully um if only had we're down to you know uh, maybe every other day we're getting a request here and there there's single audit stuff is going to be focused on cares and odea this year um hopefully osc is only a couple weeks more here but we'll, we'll see on that one i don't really have any time frame or updated time frame from them did get a huge list of stuff to get for them today um sursa revised applications in thank you stacy and patty for uh, signing off and getting that in. ARP was due by the end of this month, but it's probably 80% done at least. Um, we need to do an amendment for the CARES Act and I'm sitting down tomorrow to work on that. Um, that all stems from the parochials and kind of them switching some other stuff from supplies over to contractual to cover some other salaries. So nothing major there. Working on the transparency report. Again, this one's due right before Labor Day and working with legal on a number of things, but I guess mostly right now is uh, with legal and insurance regarding King and King and trying to get that contract hammered out. I'm still waiting on when we're gonna meet. And finally, some good news, we received our BOCES aid. So we've been uh, going back and forth is a nice way to put it. They had, uh, there was an erroneous invoice and the aid should have been received back on June 30th. Back in May, we got the invoice, $725,000. They tried to charge us for some computers with the Windows 10 upgrade. Warwick charged them, they paid it, tried to charge us. We said, thanks, but no thanks. We'll pay for what we've received. Um, nothing really happened with it till the end of the year. And so then, you know, we held our position. We verified with Bowers that we were doing the right thing. We verified with OSC that we were doing the right thing. Um, so they still just decided to kind of hold our aid to try and prompt us to pay for uh, some of that stuff. Finally, they issued a credit for $550,000, which is the stuff that we had not received. Um, so now we were able to get everything squared away. And a little over a month later, we received the aid from 1920 that we should have received that over a month ago. Is that negatively impacted our budget in any way? No, it, it didn't really hurt us from a cash flow standpoint right now um, or in the future. But it was just, uh, I don't know, <laughs> one of those rough things that it's going to take a while to repair some of that relationship stuff. And we were doing the right thing. So well, I appreciate you standing your ground. All right, moving on to items for consent agenda. Resolve that consent agenda items A, B, C, D, and E are hereby approved. Can I have a motion, please? Susie. And a second. 
Jason. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Moving on to items for board action. Where is Watertown City School District Board of Education members Kelly Gozier, Jason Harrington, Ryan Maceres, and Suzanne Renzi Fallage were served with a notice of petition for an appeal to the Commissioner of Education on various dates, the earliest of which was July 2nd, 2021. And whereas in the time since service of the appeal upon respondents, the appeal has been assigned. And whereas under New York Education Law, Section 3811, where a commissioner's appeal arises out of the exercise of a board member's powers or performance of their duties, the school board district pays for the reasonable costs and expenses in defending the action. As long as the board member notifies the Board of Education in writing of the action's commencement within five days after service of process upon them, and whereas upon a Board of Education being placed on notice of a commissioner's appeal, New York Education Law Section 3811 provides that within the 10 days following the notice, the Board of Education has the right to designate and appoint legal counsel to represent respondents. And whereas the board met in executive session on or about July 6, 2021, to discuss the defense of the appeal, and whereas the Commissioner of Education has held that when a board is on a notice of an appeal to the commissioner, the five day period for provision of written notice may be waived. And whereas the board seeks to waive the five day written notification period under section 3811 and indicate it was on notice of the matter within five days of service of the respondents. And whereas the board seeks to confer the benefits of section 3811 of the education law on respondents, and whereas the board designates as legal counsel for our influenza PC and the respondents desire to consent to the same. Now, thir now, therefore, be it resolved as follows. Number one, the Board of Education was on notice of the appeal as of July 6, 2021. Number two, the requirement to notify the board in writing of the existence of the appeal is therefore waived as a superfluous act. Number three, the board expressly agrees to confer the benefits of section 3811 of the New York State Education Law on respondents and to be held liable for the costs incurred under its provisions, subject to the issuance of a certificate of good faith by the Commissioner of Education. Number four, the board designates as legal counsel for our influenza. Number five, respondents consent to the designation of legal counsel. And number six, this resolution shall take effect immediately. I have a motion, please. Jason. And a second. Susie. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, Patricia D. Barr, the Board of Education hereby approves the following retirement, resignations, appointments, permanent, provisional, probationary instructional, term non probationary instructional, summer school, substitutes non instructional, substitutes instructional, fall coaching boys, fall coaching girls, fall coaching co ed. Can I have a motion, please? Go ahead. Second. Laura. Any discussion? I just have a question. This is just from my board member perspective. Other board members may have this question, but in regards to the coaching appointments, I assume those are done annually. Um, because that's such a very public piece that board members are inclined to hear about, is there any way if it's, there's a change in any given year where there could be a notation that that's a change? I, I'm looking at this list. I don't know if these people have been coaching one year or 10 years. Is that something that would be helpful to other board members to know? Or I mean, it would be for me. Same. I agree with that. Absolutely. That's a great point. <coughs> any other discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Resolve that the below referenced substitute tutor and summer school teacher rates of pay for the 21-22 school year <coughs> effective September 1, 21 is are, are hereby approved. I have a motion, please. Ambrose. And a second. Randy. Any discussion? How long have we had our current pay? It's been a couple of years, so I actually reached out. It should have been right included mm -hmm. in that packet. I asked all the other superintendents. So the rates that you're approving tonight are going to put us on a level playing field with Carthage. And because we have such a substitute shortage, um, Carthage and Watertown will be the leaders in the North Country with the rates of pay. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Whereas a resolution was passed by the Board of Education on July 6, 2021, approving the appointment probationary instructional for Tina Ekstrom, item E, line two, and yet further resolved that this amended resolution reflects a correction of the certification status as follows, early childhood ed, emergency COVID-19, resolved that the amended certification status is hereby approved. I have a motion, please. Go ahead. And a second? Jason. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Carries. Resolved that a donation from the Elvis Fund through Northern New York Community Foundation for $250. The donation is designated support for the Watertown City School District School for Families program. This donation is gratefully accepted and approved and has been acknowledged in writing. I have a motion, please. Susie. And a second? Lori. Any discussion? I'll be abstaining. Okay. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Okay. I only heard two. Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Any opposed? And please note Randy's abstaining from that vote, please. Motion carried. Resolved that the following educational student trips are hereby approved. Aswagachi Educational Center uh, for these middle school students will be taken on each of the following dates, September 14th through the 17th, September 20th through the 23rd, and September 28th and September 29th. I have a motion, please. Go ahead. And a second? Lori. Any discussion? What type of activities do they do? Ropes courses, uh, team building facilitation activities. It's like a 4-H type camp? A little bit, yeah. Um, it is a nature-based camp, so they have exploratory programs as well, but it, they're there solely to do some of the team building aspects. Sounds like fun. And if you haven't been to that place, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Great place. Is every student going? It's part of their um, comprehensive improvement plan. Um, as One of their goals is to improve the culture, I'm probably not wording it right, but to improve the culture of the building. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolved that the disposal, recycle, donation, or sale of outdated and unused phone system equipment is hereby approved. I have a motion, please. Jason. And a second? Ambrose. Any discussion? So this is just all the old phoning system that they've just recently replaced, correct? That they can't find part for anymore. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Result that the disposal of outdated technology equipment is here by who? Can I have a motion, please? Ambrose. And a second? Cully. I heard Cully. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? I just, just, and again, new board members asking silly questions. I noticed in the previous one, there's options. Some are going to be thrown out. Some are sold. Some are this one's trash. Is that should be? They should all be phrased the same, really. They should all be disposal, recycle, or sale, if possible. We always want to recoup any money that we can. <clears throat> I guess that was my question because they're stated differently. So I yeah, it shouldn't. Pretty much any of those disposals should they should just be standard language. Can we make a motion right now to amend that resolution? 
Oh, Randy, are you making a motion yeah, to amend it? Yes. Can I get a second Cully. on that amendment? Thank you, Kelly. All in favor of amending the motion to re-disposal <clears throat> and or sale of old used? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And we need to vote on the actual amendment or we need to vote on the actual resolution. So we've already got Ambrose and Cully as a first and second. Yep. Okay. So all in favor of the actual resolution? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Result of the Case Middle School's Comprehensive Education Plan for the 2021-22 school year is hereby approved. Can I get a motion, please? Susie, and a second? Randy. Any discussion? This was really well put together. Very informative. Stacey worked with Mark and Jess and their team. They did, they did a great job. The only feedback from the um, group was that it, it's a lot. They're taking on a lot next year, yeah. um, but they're ambitious, so we'll support them. <laughs> and how many more years do they have to do this plan? Well, that's a um, tough thing to answer right now because the you're typically supposed to be on it for two until you have two years of quality proficiency scores on the state assessments in ELA and math. Um, we haven't taken the assessments in two years, so plan on this year really being a reset of year one, even though this is our third year through. <laughs> But it, it, you know, it's it's a lot of money for the district. Um, it's two hundred thousand dollars for case in support of funding, and it's fifty thousand dollars for the district to implement all of the things like the field trip that you just approved, et cetera. So, it is supplemental funding that supports some things that you know will help us improve. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolved that the Watertown City School District Comprehensive Improvement Plan for the 2021-22 school year is hereby approved. Can I have a motion, please? Jason. And a second? Randy. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And that is the end of the resolution. Hi. Thank you, Michelle. All righty. Um, so just to kind of review, Patty gave us a draft of her um, goals for this year. This is what we're going to base her evaluation on when we do a six month review, December is January, and then finally final review at the end of May, June. So I can go somewhere. I don't know where the heck I put. So anyway, re <laughs> review those. Um, thank you. Those goals and please provide her any feedback. And then also at the next meeting, we'll talk about um, some of the data we would like to see from Patty um, regarding those goals and how often we would like that data provided to us so we can redo it. Okay. Great. Um, uh, yes. Last question on that. Um, has this board traditionally ever discussed how we can support Patty and some of her, if there's specific things where we can be helpful to you is or is that not something that's been done I, I know that's our overall job to do that but there may be specific things that we can be helpful for you has that ever been asked before is that we've never had an actually formal conversation about that i think one-on-one -on -one we have our agenda meetings that mm -hmm. those things have a tendency to come up but it's never ended up as a whole board discussion it's a great idea. It's a great idea. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, like it. I, I welcome I it. That's why we're here. And if we are going to evaluate you on these and we're not trying to help support you in this, I know I'd want my work to help me achieve these objectives. So um, just an idea. It's a great one. Maybe when we talk about the topics, if somebody's interested in a particular area okay. and they're willing to support, I'd be very receptive of that idea. Thanks. So we can add that on to maybe next week's conversation when we discuss mm -hmm. everything else. Go ahead. Um, I want to thank everybody who got back to me on my email about committees and interest. Um, so just correct me if I'm wrong. Susie, you're going to be on the DEI committee. Jason, you're on safety and security. Uh, Ambrose, you're taking technology. Um, Brandy, you're taking professional development. Lori, you're gonna be our advocacy liaison. I'm guessing there's probably like an email or contact information to send in NISBA, so you'll be getting that information. Um, you can decide or we can chat about how often you wanna report out back to the board on okay. 
I, I don't know how much information you're going to get deluged with. So, okay, we can kind of figure out like, what do we need to know? What's important? Okay. okay. Um, so, Cully, you're either going to take wellness or PBIS. So we can either so, do. So the problem I had because the email you had sent said everything's at four o'clock, which conflicts with my your job livelihood. Okay. All right. So no committee. So it de de depends. depends on how strict four o'clock is every month. I threw out four o'clock because I figured it was the normal time. But either Stacy or Patty can correct me on. Go ahead. Wellness is at 3.30 on Thursdays once a month, okay. and I am happy to give the board a report or even copy you in on that email um, for anybody that's interested in that one. And PBIS is only meeting quarterly this year, but it is, it's typically 3.45 to 4.45. Um, but again, I can report out to the board, include you in on the emails, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if it's, if it's done a quarterly, that'd be a lot easier for me to do. Okay. So are you saying PBIS, because that's quarterly? Sure. You want to shoot for PBIS? Sure. Okay. So I'll take wellness. And I can email that to you as well. All right. And then finally, we're looking for hard confirmation on our NISB conference because the registration is open. And I know Michelle's just chomping at the bat to get us all registered. <laughs> so Susie, I know you're definite yes. I am not. You're that's not. my weekend to work. Okay. I so that's a, when I checked. All right. So who is a definite? I was. Definite. Lori, you're a definite. So Lori, because you're the alternate for the delegate, that means you're going to have to oh, hang out at that meeting <laughs> <laughs> and vote for us. <laughs> okay. Um, the easy part about that is usually they tell you kind of how to vote. So you just hold me up a paddle, yes or no. <laughs> but good news is that when I talk about the liaison uh, advocacy, the business meeting is going to be done virtually this year for the voting delegates. So that is not, in, I believe that's not in person. I think it's virtually. So that's even, that's even easier. Nancy Henry didn't love it being <laughs> virtual last year, but for this year, I think that's going to be virtual, which might be a good thing. All righty. Ambrose, you said you were a hard no, correct? Right. Cully, I know you were looking into it. Yeah, I think I'm in. I'm good. You're, you're good? Yeah. Okay. Jason? I'm out. Uh, out. Okay. Randy? I'm out, but I can't. Okay. So it looks like we've got two documents. <laughs> Josh is happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, buddy. <laughs> we'll find other ways. <laughs> um, and the other question I had for you, Stacy, was what are our dates for the meet the new teachers for the upcoming school year? And do you are we are we doing what we normally do? Do you want board representation? Like what is the letters should have gone out in the mail yesterday, um, but the date would be August seventeenth. Um, at 8.30 in the morning, we are doing the introductory fair in the atrium the way we normally do it. Um, you, we would welcome all of your presence there. Um, typically what happens, um, what used to happen is we used to have every group and department in the district stand and deliver information to the new staff for 10, 12 minutes each. And it, the feedback that we received was after three hours of that, we're, we're done. Um, so we tried to change it up about two years ago. And what we do now is sort of set it up like a scavenger hunt and they have to meet and greet and practice one of our professional skills as well for September, which is greeting um, and find people in the district who they might need to know um, and who are connected with different departments and areas. Um, and so at each place, they will collect something, if you will. So you could decide, I sent you the statement um, in the invitation, you can decide what you would like to change it to or if you'd like to keep it the same. But for example, at the IT department, they come, um, the AV person will take their photo for their ID badge um, and they will get their Chromebook and, and log in to ensure that everything works appropriately um, at that time. So just, and then other groups, you know, will give them, um, you know, fun little resources to help them get started in their journey at Watertown City School District. So it's a, it's a bigger event, but it, it makes it a little bit more interactive and, and enjoyable. Okay. I can certainly send out an email on what we've done in previous years. So if anyone has other ideas, I don't mind doing it, but I know I'll definitely be there that morning. So, okay. Actually, Maria, that letter might be in your 
box. I'm not sure. Good, because I'm having trouble getting mail at home. So okay, go. <laughs> that's good. I didn't see an address on it from Kira, so. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. So I'm going to go around the table. Randy, I'm going to start with you. Maybe you'd like to share, add, browser. Okay, Jason. Syracuse Alumni Basketball Tournament. They're in the finals. Finals is tonight at nine. It's huge. Be sure to watch it. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. Okay. That's what I got. Thanks. Colleague. All right. Sure. Ambrose. Uh, I think the vision of the DEI uh, presentation today was amazing. Pretty awesome stuff. As well. Kudos to anybody that worked on that. All right. And you'll notice that we only have one upcoming date, and that's our next board meeting. Also on the 17th, that is at 4 p.m. Um, and then just also... Photo that night. Uh, I guess if we have to <laughs> group photo that night so you know wear your best top make sure your hair is done <laughs> put that out on the website <laughs> <laughs> on the board doc site it, it will be really cool to have a group picture there and I think that would be awesome if we could do that so thank okay. you and can I add one more thing? sure <laughs> in my report I completely forgot to mention the Smart Schools project that is going on specifically at Knickerbocker right now and North and Sherman. Um, I've been working very closely to try to figure out what is going on because I'm really worried with the opening of school coming in such a short time. At Sherman, I was there this morning and I'd appreciate it. You know, feel free to drive by. No work was done yesterday or today. And I do understand they work for 10 hour days but it is time to really move forward on this project and the work itself is concerning. So I'd like you to take a look at that, but know that, that we are working on it on the back end. A couple of concerns you'll just notice on this handicap ramp, it looks more like a roller coaster in some areas than a ramp and that's concerning to me. And then there's a flagpole in the middle of the main entrance where the students are going to walk, where they're going to walk. And although there's plenty of room to walk, all I could vision was the Christmas story where the kid <laughs> puts their on the pole. And I can tell you, like, we want to try to avoid that. So um, work in progress there. North on the ramp there, every, because of the incline that it is, every 10 inches, they should have switched the grade about an inch and they only did three quarters of an inch. So when they got to the end of it, they were five inches off. So they have a couple of options to do some remediation there. And we're waiting to find out what their plans are to, you know, to kind of remedy that problem. And then um, Knickerbocker is, they were doing a lot of the electrical work today, and that seems to be going pretty well through Watson. We, we think, I'm pretty sure we're on target. But the good news is that there was sheetrock there today, although it was stored kind of on a side wall, and it's not in the upright position but where it needs to be. Hopefully progress will start to happen very quickly because they're at least with the inside work at least one to two weeks behind. So Josh and I will continue to work with Brian and figure out next steps and where we need to go uh, with all of the above, but some, some concerns that I should have noted in my report earlier. So the North mistake, the five inches, are they eating the cost of that since they have to redo it? They will eat the cost, but there there's a plan A, like they've been given two choices by construction associates on how to fix the problem and they, they are determining which way they choose to fix it. If not, then it's determined that they would have to tear it all out and that will be a $20,000 loss to them, not to the district. Okay, good. Patty, on the Sherman piece, what's the remedy to that? You, or is that is that really what it was to be and we just didn't know it? No, that's not what it's to okay, be. So what's the remedy to that? They're, they haven't gotten back to us with an answer yet. And the construction manager it was on vacation yesterday, um, today, so hopefully tomorrow when he comes back, we can get together and really you know, figure it out. Josh and I were also in on an email today for, I think it was Knickerbocker specifically, the inside of the cabinets were supposed to be gray um, and they are going to be white. They should were shipped white. If, we, if we're insistent on the gray on the insides of these cabinets, then it's probably what, four to six week turnaround, Josh? Yeah. So Josh um, had asked for, you know, will we be compensated for that difference? You know, we'll be getting some sort of a refund on that because the money with this project is very tight, as you know, with the way things have been with the pandemic. So every dollar really is so important. Right. But hopefully within the next two weeks, we'll have some, some solid answers. 
and hopefully we'll be in a better position because they were even that much closer to the start of school. Yeah. Is part of your concern with Sherman to just completion and all of these things is completion by the start of school? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. It's a little frightening when you drive by there. Yeah. Well, you know, and I took a lot of pictures of it last Wednesday night and when I sent them out on Thursday morning, what was concerning to me was that um, in two of the emails that I received back, it was about the two dark spots. And I wasn't even questioning the dark spots because that's where the concrete probably hadn't occurred yet, but that wasn't the issue. I said, I'd appreciate it if you go look at the entire project. And so then uh, the architect that's in charge from Bernie and Carr was here last Thursday morning and Brian Arias, our director of facilities came over and we were going over two other color samples for shades and for a little piece of a countertop for the entrance ways uh, where the vestibules will be. And so we brought that up about, you know, really making sure that you get to the site and somebody from BCA was on site and did take a lot of pictures and did agree that there are some issues there. So or to follow. Um, also, don't forget, starting in September, our committees are gonna be starting. So we're back to policy and finance audit and facilities. So that'll be once a month for either of those committees too, um, just as a heads up. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? So made. Okay, second. Lori. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries.